In today's video we're going to be making a little game called Star Hunter using Scratch where basically we are this diver and our goal for the game is to collect this star as many times as possible. Each time we collect it it's going to jump to a different position on the page and while we are collecting this star we need to avoid the three octopus which will be also moving around the page in different directions. If I press the green start button at the top here you can have a look at how this game works. Okay, so basically we've got three octopus, one of them's chasing us, the other one's just moving in random positions, one of them's left and right. Okay, when you get caught, the game stops. Now I'll just run it again and show you what happens when you get the star. See how you get points up the top, and then little sounds play as well. Okay, so it's a fairly straightforward game, not much to it, but it is going to show us the basics of Scratch and a lot of the techniques we're going to use in later tutorials. So I'm just going to close off that game now and make a new one up. Okay, so when you make a new document in Scratch, you are greeted with this screen. Okay, over on the left hand side here, this is called your stage. And this is basically where the action takes place or where your game is actually played. You'll see inside that stage, you've got the Scratch Cat that appears as your first sprite. Sprites are basically little objects that you use to make up your game. So in our game we're going to have Octopus, a star and the diver as our sprites. Okay, We don't need the cat in this one so basically you can go down to your sprites here, right click on the thumbnail and delete it. Okay, We just want to start with an empty page. Okay, before you get started I would recommend saving this so go to save as. You probably want to have your own folder called um, Star Hunter and inside of that just give it the file name Star Hunter as well. Alright, you can see the name of your game appears up above the stage there. Now to get started to set the scene I want to put a backdrop into my stage here that looks like it's underwater. And the way we do that is we go down the bottom here and select the stage and choose the first option below it that says choose a backdrop from library. When you click on that, you're greeted with all sorts of different backdrops that Scratch has saved in its library. But what you want to do is click on the underwater theme here and choose underwater 3. You could choose one of those other underwater 1 or 2s, but I think underwater 3 will probably suit for this project. And when you click OK, you'll see that you now have a backdrop in your game. Okay, so that's already looking good. Uh, the next thing you want to do is bring in some sprites, so little bits and bobs that make up our game. And the way we do that is go down to the Sprite section, look to the right where it says New Sprite, and choose the first option there, that little troll that says Choose Sprite from Library. What I'm going to do is go to the Underwater theme again, and you've got your choice of two divers. I'm just going to choose Diver 2 and click OK. You'll see that he appears in your Sprite section down the bottom and also on your stage, and you can pick him up and move him around. If you hit that little information symbol, a little I in the top left hand corner of the diver, you can give him a rename. You just want him called Diver, not Diver 2, just Diver. Once he's in, that's all we need to do for now, and we're going to bring in another sprite. So click on the little troll again, go to your underwater tab there, and we're going to choose the octopus this time, and click OK. Once you've got your octopus in, doesn't need any renaming, you can just move him around if you want. That's all you need to do for the octopus. We're going to make one more new sprite now as well, and it's going to be a star. I'm not sure what category or theme that comes under, so we're just going to scroll down until we find these stars. There they are. Star 1 is the one we want, so we'll click OK on that. Don't forget we want to rename it. Instead of star 1, we just want to hit that information symbol and call it star. And just hit the back button when you're done. You can move that little star anywhere on your stage. So that is basically our page set up. We just need to code it all now and make it work. So the first thing I want to make work is this diver. The way the diver works is wherever our mouse cursor goes, we want the diver to follow it. Okay, so I'm going to click on the little diver sprite and I'm going to come across to the right hand side of my page. Okay, on the right hand side of the page here, we've got this section where we can add some code to this diver to make him work. In the middle section here we've got blocks of code, or they're also known as scripts. Okay, and these scripts can be dragged across into our little coding window here and make our diver do certain things. Okay, the first script you want to bring across pretty much in any game you make is in the events tab. Okay, in the events section here, this very first block needs to be dragged into your code section here 
and it's called when the green flag is clicked. Now that's basically saying when we press this green flag up here it starts our game. What do we want to happen to our diver when we click that green flag? Okay. Well the first thing I want it to do, I actually want him to resize himself because I think he's a little bit too big. This stage area we can't make any bigger or smaller. We're stuck at this size. Okay, so what we need to do is make our objects, or our sprites, a little bit smaller to begin with. So I'm going to go to this looks section here and go all the way to the bottom where it says set size to 100%. I'm going to drag that onto my page and change the 100% to 65%. Once you've done that, just pick it up and drag it and snap it on to that little brown, uh, brown script above it. So now when we press the green flag and run our game, the size of our diver is going to drop down to 65% of what it currently is. So if you press the green flag, test that, watch the diver resize. Bang. Okay, so he's resized himself, which is good. What we need to do now is make him move. And the way we make him move, we're going to make him follow our mouse pointer. So we go back to the motion section here. And we're going to go down, go down, go down, about halfway, and find the go to mouse pointer option. Drag that out and drop it in just below the set size to 65%. So that's basically saying after it's resized itself, go straight to where our mouse pointer is. Okay, that diver is going to follow our mouse pointer. So let's test that by pressing the green flag at the top to run our game. And bang, see the diver just went straight to where our mouse pointer was. But the issue is he doesn't follow it. He went there for that split second, but then stopped. What we need is for this piece of code here, the go to mouse pointer code, to just repeat itself over and over again throughout our game. So it's constantly following our mouse pointer. And the way we do that is we go to our control tab here and we select this forever option. Now this is called a loop or a forever loop. And what we're going to do is put that go to mouse pointer code inside of it. It snaps inside. And basically that code now is just going to keep repeating forever until our game is finished. Okay, so our diver should now be following our mouse pointer all the way throughout the game. So drag that code up and snap it back in to the top section there. Run your game and now you've got a diver that is following your mouse pointer. So wherever you move your mouse, your diver is following. That's looking really good. One last thing I want to add onto the diver is some sound effects. Okay, I want to make it as if the diver is breathing underwater and blowing bubbles through his scuba diving equipment. Okay, and the way we do that is we go up to the sounds tab. At the moment you've got the pop sound in your uh, sounds list and if you press play you can have a listen to it. It's just some weird little pop sound. Hit the little cross on that and get rid of it. Okay, We don't need it for this game. What we're going to do is hit the little speaker here and we're going to choose a sound from Scratch's library. The sound we want is called bubbles. If you press play you'll be able to hear it. Click OK once you've got it and you'll see that that now comes into your sound list. If you go back to your scripts tab now and go down to the sound option, you'll see the first one there is play sound bubbles. Okay. And basically we want this play sound bubbles to repeat over and over again while our game is played. Okay, So what we need to do is we're going to come up with a new event. So when we click our green flag, we want to play our sound. Play sound bubbles. There it is there. The issue is though, that only plays for about three or four seconds and it stops. As I said, we want this to play all the way throughout our game. So we need to use one of these forever loops again. So it's forever playing. So go back to the control tab, find your forever loop, and just drag it in so it fits around the play sound bubbles. So now when we click our green flag we should have the bubble sound playing forever. Okay, So we can move our little fellow around and have the sound of the bubbles playing at the same time. Alrighty so that's all well and good. That's our diver all coded up. Pretty simple. What we need to do now is code the star and the octopus to make them work. I might start with the star because it's a little bit easier than the octopus. Okay, so what I need you to do is go down the bottom and click on your star sprite. When you click on that you'll see that all the code disappears from your code window up here. That's because we're on the star now. If you were to go back to the diver, 
his code's still there. Okay, but it's the star now that we want to work on. Now for the star, what we're going to do is go to the events tab again and bring out the when clicked option. Now the when the green flag is clicked. So when we start our game, first thing I want to do is just drop the size of that star. So I'm going to go to the looks option, go down the bottom of that list and where it says set size to 90% at this stage, we're going to change it to 75%. Okay, and if you press the green flag, you'll see that that star just drops its size a little bit. Barely noticeable, but just enough to make it fit nicely on our page. Now, what we want to happen, when this diver is touching that star, we want to earn ourselves some points. Okay, so to get some points, we need to create a thing called a variable. A variable works like a little box where you can store information inside it, such as numbers in this case. Okay, and those numbers can change. Okay, they will be variables. And the way we do that is we go over to whoops, our data tab here we're going to make a variable. Our variable in this case is going to be called score. Leave for all sprites checked and click on OK. When you press OK you'll see that a little variable appears in the top left hand corner of your page. That's your score. That little number there, zero, in the orange container is your variable that can change. Each time we collect a star we're going to get that number to change. Okay. So what we're going to do first of all when we start our game, so when the green flag's clicked and it's set our size, we want to set that score to zero. So every time we run our game, that score should start at zero. Okay. Afterwards, we want that score to go up every time our little diver touches that star. So what we need to do is go into our control tab here and we're going to create something called an if-then statement. So basically these work like if a certain criteria is met, then some sort of action will be performed. Okay, so in this case we're going to go to the sensing tab here and the first option says touching mouse pointer. We're going to pick that up and drag it between the words if and then. And we're going to change the mouse pointer to diver. So now what this is saying is if our star is touching the diver then what should happen? Well, we want to get a point. So I'll go quickly back to the data tab here and change our score by one and just drop it in between those yellow tabs. So if our star is touching the diver, then we change the score by one. Pretty straightforward, isn't it? Okay. Now this code isn't going to work unless we put a forever loop around it. We want this code looping over and over again throughout our game, so it's always listening out for when our diver and our star are touching one another. Okay, as soon as they touch one another, then we can get that point. Okay, so I'm going to bring that forever loop out and put it around all of that code. So it's always going to be listening for when the star and the diver collide. And we can bring that up and attach it to the rest of our code now. Okay, if we run the game and hit this star, watch this score. It's going to go up pretty quickly. But each time our diver touches it, we get a point. And it's because I'm holding the diver on top of that star. That's the reason those points are going up so quickly. Okay, it is a little bit of a glitch, but we will fix that in just a moment. Now, one way to keep your users amused and entertained with your game is by rewarding them. And the way we're going to reward players is with a score in this case, and also a happy sound. We want to play a little happy sound when we collect a star. It's just showing the user that they've done something right. So what we need to do is go up to our Sounds tab, and we're going to get rid of this pop sound again, and we're going to search for another new sound. The sound we're looking for this time is called Fairy Dust. So I'm just going to scroll down until I find Fairy Dust. There it is there. You can play it. Have a listen to it if you want. And back in the scripts here, I'm going to go down to our Sound section, and you've got the first option that says play sound fairy dust. Basically, when you touch the diver, you want to change your score by one, and you also want to play the sound of the fairy dust. Okay, so two things are happening now when our star and our diver are touching. We get one point, and we hear a happy sound play.
Okay, it's not going to work too well just yet because our star sits in the same position. So every time I hover over it, it's going to play that sound lots of times. So it sounds like a bit of a glitch at the moment. What we need to do is actually make that star disappear and then reappear somewhere else on the page. That way it won't get stuck in that position and we won't be getting millions of points and hearing that sound repeat itself over and over again. Okay, so what we need to do is use coordinates to make this star move to a different location on the page. If we break up our stage in Scratch, it's broken up into basically a grid with different coordinates, like something you'd see in maths when you're plotting graphs and things like that. The center point on our page has a value of x equaling 0 and y equal to 0. Okay, if we want to move left, then our x value will go into the negatives. You can go all the way to minus 240, that's the limit of our page. If you want to go to the right, we can go into the positives all the way up to x equaling 240. Okay, but that's the limit of our page, it won't go past 240. If you want to go up along the y-axis, okay, you can see our y-value will change. Okay, 180 is the limit for our y-value. And if you want to go down, minus 180 is the limit. Okay. So that's basically how the coordinates work on our page. We've got 240 either side for our x value and 180 either side there for our y values. So what we're going to do now with our star is basically get the computer to pick a random set of coordinates to place that star once we collect it. So we're going to go to the motion tab here and we're going to go down to go to x and y and put that in beneath the play sound. So after we've got one point and we've played a sound, we're going to make this star go to an X and Y position, or a new set of coordinates on the page. Now we're not going to go with the ones that are in there already, we're going to get the computer to come up with some random coordinates. So what we're going to do is go to our operators tab here and choose pick random. And we're going to drop one in the X value and one in the Y value. Now remember the x values went to minus 240 and plus 240 as they limit. We don't want the star to sit right on the corner of the page or the edge of the page. Okay, so what we might do is get it in between the 200s. So minus 200 and 200. So for our go to x value, we're going to pick a random number between minus 200 and 200. And for the y value, we know it's 180 either way, so we're going to go minus 180 or 180. Oh, not 180, sorry, because that's going to sit on the edge of the page, so we need to make it a bit smaller. 150 would be better. There we go, sorry, my bad. Alright, so when our star and the diver are touching, we get one point, we play a sound, and then we go to a random X coordinate and a random Y coordinate on the page. So that should be our star working, so let's press the play button and see what happens now. You can see it jumped over here. Each time I collect that star, we're getting one point, we hear the sound play, and it pops up in a random location. Okay, so that's working well. Last thing we need to do now is make our bad guy work, which is this octopus. Okay, so you can click on the octopus tab down there in your um, sprite section. And what we're going to do with our octopus, first of all, the obvious one is resize it. If we were to bring our diver down onto the page, you can see that he's a lot bigger than our diver, and that shouldn't be the case. Okay, we need to make it a little bit easier, otherwise that would be too hard. So we're going to go to our events tab first of all, like usual. Make sure you're on the octopus here and you've got a clean slate. You want to drag out when the start button is clicked, or the green flag. Go to the looks option and we're going to change the set size to 30 percent, so he's a lot smaller than what he is now. Okay, so here's the octopus here. If I run the game now, you'll see he drops down to a much more suitable size at 30 percent. That looks good. Next thing we're going to do is get this little fella moving. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is animate him, and that means get his legs moving so he actually looks like he's swimming around. One thing you're going to notice with some of these sprites in Scratch is that they have different costumes. That's this second tab up here. Click on this costumes tab for a moment. You'll see that this octopus has two costumes. He's got costume one, costume two. 
And if you watch this little pitch over here on my stage and I click between those two costumes quickly, it looks like he's swimming. Okay, so what I need to tell Scratch to do is to make him start swimming basically, or make him start animating. What we're going to do is we're going to come up with a new event. So when the start button is clicked, what we want to do is tell our little guy to change into the next costume. Okay, so he's got two costumes, he's going to start in costume one and then he's going to switch to costume two. Okay, that's all well and good, but that only happens once. So remember, back in our control tape here, we can tell that code to keep repeating forever. So grab your forever loop and put it around the costume, next costume option. So now when you start your game, that next costume is going to keep repeating forever. Now if I just run this piece of code, watch this little octopus. It looks like he's glitching out. It's just going a bit too quick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab, it's still in the control tape here, this wait one second option. And I'm going to put it below the next costume. Okay, and you can see now it waits one second before it changes. That's probably a bit too slow. So I'm going to click inside that wait one second and put 0 0.1. Now you can see our little fella moving pretty cool. He's moving pretty smoothly. You can have 0 0.2, 0 0.1, doesn't really matter. I might go 0 0.2. So that little piece of code there, when the green flag's clicked, Go to the next costume, then wait 0.2 of a second before looping around and doing that all again. And that's going to continue to do that until our game is stopped. So our little fella's always going to be animated, always going to be swimming. Okay, so that's good. The issue is he's swimming on the spot, he's not moving anywhere. Alright, so let's get him moving somewhere. Let's make this guy chase our diver. So wherever our diver goes, Let's make this octopus follow him. Okay, so at the top here, when we click the start flag, we set his size to 30. Next thing I want him to do in the motion tab here is point towards the diver. So change mouse pointer to diver. Snap that onto your code up there. So now when we start our game, the octopus is going to point towards wherever that diver is positioned on the page. Once he's pointing towards the diver, so he's looking at him, we want him to move towards him. Okay, so we just grab this first option here that says move 10 steps. Now 10 steps is very quick, probably too quick for this game, so we're going to half that and put it to move 5 steps. If we run that, we'll just see what happens to this little guy here. I might put my little diver down further, so we'll see if he actually turns and faces him. Actually, he did turn and face him but he didn't move anywhere. And the reason for that is, I'll just go back to my octopus for a sec, this only occurs once and then it stops. Okay, we actually need this to loop over and over again in another forever loop, so it continues to move the entire way through our game. So in the control tab, grab your forever loop and put it around that blue piece of code. So now our little octopus is always going to be pointing towards our diver and always moving at speed 5. And that code just keeps repeating itself over and over again. So let's put it up here, run our game. Now we've got our octopus following our diver. So as I move around, the octopus is always looking at him, always following him. If you think that's moving a little bit too quick, change this move 5 steps to maybe 3 run it again. Okay, and you can see it's moving a little bit slower now. Might be a little bit easier that way. So 3, 4 or 5 I think will be a good speed for that octopus. Okay. The other thing that I was thinking of, when we first start this game, why don't we get this octopus to start in the center of the page? Okay, so what I'm going to do is go to my events and bring out one more new block of code. So when the green flag is clicked, so we're going to go to the motion option here and I'm just going to set its X and Y coordinates. Now if you remember on this grid, the middle of the page is 0, 0. The X and Y coordinates are set both to 0. So let's go to X, 0, Y, 0. Now we should have our little fella starting in the center of the page. Yep. Looks good. 
he did leave pretty quickly off the center of the page though so I might actually pause him for say half a second before he actually starts moving so in my control tab I might just grab this wait one second option I don't think it really matters where you put this I'll just put it back up here with my main code um, after we set his size to 30% let's wait 0 0.5 seconds before he starts moving so now when I run it he'll sit there for half a second then he'll start moving okay. so that's working well the main issue now is that when the octopus catches the diver nothing happens okay we want our game to end when the octopus is actually touching the diver alright so what we need to do again is another one of these if then statements so bring this if then statement out so we want to basically say if the octopus is touching the diver then stop the game okay so we need to use our sensing tab for this and we're going to use the first one the touching mouse pointer there so if our octopus is touching change it from mouse pointer to diver so if the octopus is touching the diver then and in control choose stop all that just stops our game okay. now this piece of code we want it to loop forever okay we always want the game listening out for when the octopus is touching the diver okay so we're going to put that below the move four steps so it comes inside this forever loop okay so if we run the game now We'll let the octopus catch me, it should stop. Okay, everything just freezes and our game has stopped, just like if we were to press that red stop button. Alrighty, so that's that octopus looking pretty good. Okay, he follows us around wherever we go. He's not too quick, not too slow, so there's a bit of a challenge there. As soon as he hits us, we stop. Okay, having one octopus, probably too easy for this game. What I'm going to do is add in another octopus, so another enemy. And the quick way to do that down here where we've got the octopus, just right click on him and duplicate him. So now you've got octopus 2 in your library down the bottom and you've got two octopus on the page. Now we're just going to modify this code to make him a little bit different to the other one. So we're not going to have two octopus following us, we're just going to have one octopus following us and maybe this one can go left and right, that just moves left and right across the page. He doesn't move from that position. Alright, so this bottom piece of code when clicked that just basically makes him animated, makes his legs move. So we can leave that code as it is. This one here, when clicked, go to X and Y, 0, 0. That means start him in the center of the page. We don't want that. Okay, we've already got one octopus starting in the center of the page as it is. So let's just right click on that code and delete it. Okay, wherever we position this guy, that's where he's going to start. Okay, so about there is good. Now it's this top piece of code, where he moves and how he moves that we want to affect. Okay, so when we start the game, set his size to 30%. That's good. Okay, it's the rest of this code here that I'm going to just delete. Okay, first thing I want to do is go to motion, and I want this octopus looking to the right. So the way we do that is we change this point in direction option. So bring that out and attach it to the bottom of that code and point in direction, you've got a choice here, you can have him pointing right, left, up or down okay and you can see that 90 degrees is pointing to the right and that's the way I want him facing now when I press the green arrow you'll see that our little octopus will face to the right okay so you can see that one bobbing up and down the middle of the page, he's facing right so he's ready to go now we just need him coded up to move him left and right okay so what I'm going to do is go back, yep yeah, we're already on the motion one first of all we need to set his speed so the speed, we're going to slow him down a bit maybe about 8 steps, so that's still pretty quick and I'm going to drop that in there, let's see what happens he faces to the right and moves 8 steps, we'll see if he actually moves anywhere no, the reason he's not moving is because we need a forever loop, we need to continually tell him to move we don't always tell him to move, he's just going to stop, he doesn't know what to do. So grab this forever loop, put it around the move there, and make him move 8 steps continually. So that basically moves him at a speed of 8. Press play now, I'll just move him over here so you can see him move. We've got our little guy flying across the page. The issue is, he stops 
when he gets to the edge of the page and doesn't move anywhere else. So what we need to do, back in our motion tab here, if he's on the edge of the page, then we're going to make him bounce off it. Okay, let's try that. Oops, I might just need to watch the other guy. So you can see our guy in the middle there, he's moving left and right, no worries, but he turns upside down when he comes back to the left. So what we need to do is just scroll down a little bit in our motion tab here and set the rotation style to left and right. That way it just moves him left and right without flipping him upside down. So you're watching there left and right now. And he's moving fine left and right. So that's looking good. Last thing we need to do is just make sure that when we touch this guy that the game stops. So we just need to go back to our control and do the if then statement again. We need to be sensing. So if the octopus is touching the diver, then we stop all. And remember that piece of code needs to go just below the set rotation style. It comes inside that forever loop. It needs to be always repeating. So our game listens out for when our diver and our octopus are touching and it's going to stop if they do touch. Alright, so now we should have two octopus working. Let's give it a test run. One of them follows us, one of them just goes left and right. If we hit this one going left and right, the game stops. Alrighty, so that's looking good. Pretty, um, pretty good. I still think we could add one more octopus in to make this game a little bit more challenging. So, on Octopus 2 down here in our sprite library, just right click on him, duplicate him, and we'll get Octopus 3. Okay, remember we're just going to edit this code to make him a little bit different to before. So this is Octopus 3 here, bobbing around. We'll just move him away from the other two for a moment. Remember this bottom piece of code? This is the one that animates him, so we're just going to leave it as it is. We're not going to touch that. It's this top piece of code up here that we're going to move. All change, so he moves a little bit different. We don't want him just going left and right, because we've already got one octopus that does that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to this section here just delete it okay so when we click this third octopus oh sorry when we click the green flag the third octopus its size is going to go down to 30 percent okay. next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the motion tab and choose point in direction okay now at the moment it's pointing to the right which is basically the 90 degree mark I want this guy to choose any direction to go in Okay, so if we were to look at this little um, thing here, if we want him facing to the right, you could choose a positive number anywhere between 0 and 180. If you want him moving to the left or facing to the left, you choose a number between 0 and minus, 100 and, uh, minus 179. Okay, so what we're going to do is get the computer to choose a random direction in between those values. So we're going to go to the Operators tab here and get the computer to pick a random number. At the moment it's between 1 and 10. But we're going to change that to minus 179 to 180. So that means it could look any direction in that full circle. It could be looking down, it could be looking left, it could be looking up to the right, it could be any of the diagonals in between. Doesn't matter. It's going to be any random number between those two there. Okay. And once we do that, we're going to get him to move in whatever direction he's facing. So we go back to the motion here, we tell him to move. I might set him to 6 this time, so he's going to move at a speed of 6. Now remember, he doesn't move unless we put a forever loop around this. Okay, so grab your forever loop and put it around the move 6 steps. Let's give this a crack. Remember to watch this guy up here, he's the one that's going to be moving. Oops, I should stop it and play it first. There he goes. So he is moving randomly, but you can see he's stuck now in the top right-hand corner up here. Okay, so what we need to do is make him bounce off the walls. So back to motion. If on edge, bounce. That's going to make him bounce off the walls now. So there you go. You can see him going diagonally through the page there. And he's just going to bounce off those walls. Last thing you want to stick in here is... If he touches the diver, then we need to stop the game. Okay, so it's another if then statement from our control tab. In sensing, we need to choose if the octopus is touching the diver, then 
back in control, choose stop all and that piece of code goes under if on edge bounce. Alrighty, so let's give that a test run now, let's see if we've got three different movers one guy through the middle should be moving left and right one guy's just going to bounce randomly around the page and the other guy actually follows us that appears to be happening so that's all well and good one thing I noticed though on Octopus 1 here, the first one we were waiting for half a second before he started moving at the start of our game I think we need to add that little bit of code into Octopus 2 and 3 so in control here it's just going to go below the point in direction so 0.5 second wait time so it waits for half a second before it starts moving okay so we'll do that on Octopus 3 as well just wait 0.5 seconds and that goes just above the forever loop so now when we start our game all Octopus should just wait for half a second before they start moving alright so that is looking pretty good. I think we've got a complete game now. So just go to File and Save, first of all. And then I want you to hit the full screen option. Okay, it's this little funny square up here. If you press the flag, we should see our score reset to zero. All our octopus will reset. And now we can move around and collect the star. Okay. It's just a matter of who can get the highest score before they get caught. So score of seven not too bad but that's it you can hit the minimize button to go back to your normal screen size that's your first game created in scratch once it's saved up you're all finished